So after the little break, My Hero Academia is back and is back as strong as ever. And it totally gets my Shonen hype going. Normally we see training arcs that take over the entire episode or the course of several episodes, but Deku was able to learn the proper usage of All for One pretty quickly under Gran Torino's guidance and suggestions. So now Gran Torino might seem like a clumsy and senile fool, but when he gets serious, like he doesn't mess around. He's not a pro hero for nothing. You know, he's able to smack Deku around, and even when Deku figures out his pattern of attack, he's not able to even land a blow on him because he's just that quick on his feet. And we find out why uh, All Might was really terrified of Gran Torino. It's because he didn't pull his punches. Like, uh, like Gran Torino just totally, you know, goes to town on him during his training. So Deku finds out why he's struggling at using one for all efficiently. And it's because whenever he fights, he has to think like, okay, I'm going to use his finger or I'm going to use his fist to, you know, charge up an attack. And that's keeping him from... Uh, using one for all to his fullest potential. At the same time, he also has to worry about not blowing up his arm, right? So it keeps him from chaining his attacks and, you know, doing any quick combos and being efficient while fighting. So when he was out fighting, um, I mean, sorry, when he was out practicing, he kept face planting into the wall because he just couldn't activate one for all in his arms that quickly. And so it's just not efficient, right? In a fight, you don't think, okay, he's throwing this arm at me. It's time for me to lift this arm, block, you know, it's mostly just like reflexes and in instinct when it comes to fighting. So Deku thinks about this for a bit, you know, why he's so stiff when he's fighting. And he gets the epiphany, uh, strangely through microwavable taiyaki. I mean, it's weird, but if it's stupid but works, it ain't stupid. So he finds out instead of concentrating all of the heat, all of the power at one part of his body, like the Taiyaki, right? He's, he realizes he should let the heat and power course through his entire body like in a microwave. So instead of keeping, uh, so instead of like flipping switch every single time he wants to use an attack, he could just flip it one time, let one for all course throughout his entire body, and it's much, it's a much efficient way of fighting for him. Now, you know, Gran Torino's like, yeah, you finally found out. Um, let's, you know, wanna, wanna put that to practice. But we don't really get to see that happen this episode. That's So that's definitely something to look forward in the next episode. Now, we get to see more of Stain, and I'm kind of liking him, despite, you know, his really creepy design. I mean, he kind of looks, from some angles, look like a really fucked up Ninja Turtle. But seeing his interactions with Shigaraki gives me an idea of what he's all about. Now, I don't really read the manga, um, but if I can't wait till the next season, I probably will. But I've read bits of the wiki and uh, talked to some people that did read, and I'm not going to spoil it for you guys, but in this episode, we do see that the two villains stand for really different things. Um, Stain has his own purpose for going after heroes, and if you want to take a vague hint, um, <laughs> take a look at all the pro heroes you see in this episode. Actually, no, all the other previous episodes, and just see how they act and observe their actions and how society views them. Um, and when you find out his motives in the later episodes, it's going to make sense and it's going to be apparent for why he's doing all these stuff. For, for Shigaraki though, he doesn't have a purpose. He's basically a child throwing a tantrum and destroying things he doesn't like. And this really pisses off Stain because he's a type of, um, he's a type of bad guy. He's a type of villain that has a purpose, right? And loathes that, uh, loathes the people that don't. And... We see that the reason why Stain was brought in to uh, to help Shigaraki is because they want it's because his uh, shadowy overlord, his his master or whatever, um, wants to bring him in to train him to become a better villain. And this is pretty cool because we get to see development, not only the development of heroes, but also the development of villains in training. So <laughs> this would be funny if there was like a villain school like out in the public, but the the government would probably shut it down. Now, the others also begin their internships, and the most notable one is Todoroki working for his father, uh, Tenya working in Hosu City, and Bakugo being trained to become a proper hero. Um, I'm really worried about uh, Tenya because he's really taking that revenge thing a bit too far. Like, look, it's understandable, right? His, someone just totally destroyed your brother, your role model, like the hero in your life. And it's natural to feel that way, but I, f I just hope it won't end badly for Tenya. 
Now, honestly, I love this ending. Um, we get to see the characters dress up in like a fantasy RPG kind of get up, and they're also in the world as well. So, I mean, I could imagine all the cosplays that are going to be out at like Anime Expo next year. Um, but also the episode preview is pretty funny. Like we get some hilarious banter between Midoriya and Shigaraki. <laughs> So apparently, the League of Villains are going to attack in the next episode, which is sooner than I expected. Like, I guess that's a good thing because rather than having like a boring training montage for each character, like what better way than to train by a, a baptism of fire? The next episode is going to be exciting and I'm seriously looking forward to it. This is like one of the most enjoyable animes I've seen so far, like something that's keeping me wanting to come back every episode, every week. But uh, yeah, what'd you guys think about this episode? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.